Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining the presentation of, of our paper, Enhancing Noise Spaces with Quantity Fact. Uh, this is a work from Max Planck Institute and uh, Bosch Center for Artificial Intelligence. So to start, let me give some motivation about this work. So most of us already know about uh, noise space or noise graph, which is a collection of tuples, subject, predicate, and objects, and possibly with other qualifiers. And uh, noise spaces are used in many real life applications such as uh, question answering, web search, or other NLP tasks. Quantities are important properties of entities such as uh, height of buildings, uh, revenue of companies, or energy efficiency of cars. However, uh, quantity facts are not well covered in many cases. For example, uh, only less than 0.5% of buildings in Wikidata have their height property. And this important property is usually not available, especially for unfamous buildings. Uh, for another example, uh, Wikidata has, uh, has information about uh, many runners, uh, but contains their personal records for only less than 1% of them. So this is the motivation for us to propose a method for automatically populating KBs with the quantity fact. Okay, so uh, for the uh, related work about quantities, the first line of work is on quantity recognition. Uh, there are already several works on um, extracting quantities from text and web tables, uh, representing them as values and units. However, detecting quantities alone is not enough. Uh, to make them meaningful, because we also need to know what the quantities are about. And this has been addressed in the early works, uh, number rule and number drone, which uh, extract uh, geopolitical indicators for countries such as GDP or inflation rate. However, this work is very limited because they only target uh, geopolitical uh, um, indicators relations, and they do not work on large scales and their precision is quite low. Another live work is about uh, numerical information extraction, which extract numerical tuples from text. However, uh, these tuples are not mapped to a, to a KB yet, and that's why they still need more post processing to be added to the KB. And the final, uh, the final work that I want to mention is the two works on quantity search, Q search, and Qt. These two systems are designed for answering uh, quantity queries like. Uh, buildings higher than 1,000 feet. Uh, however, these, these are search-oriented systems. They have a good uh, precision for top results, but the recall is quite low. Okay, so our problem statement is as follows. In the input, we are given a, a noise space, a collection of text documents, and a quantitative target predicate B, which is assumed to be well, not well covered by the KB. Um, by the KB and, and this target uh, predicate defines some constraints about the type of the, of the entities to be the subject of the fact and the set of possible unit of the quantity object. In the output, we want to extract quantity fact for P from the raw text document, which could include facts that are already in the KB and also include the novel quantity fact. And now we will describe our system. Uh, this is the overview of our system for quantity KB fact extraction, which is, which is called uh, QL. Our extraction method is a uh, query driven, consisting of four main steps, iteratively, uh, iteratively run in a loop. The main idea is that we maintain a query, which describes the target uh, predicate B, and the query can be derived from the KB. And then in each iteration, uh, the query is used to extract information from the text collection. The high confident extraction from the query can be sent to some post-processing steps and then can be added to the KB, answering the high precision. And the low uh, confidence extractions can be used to boost, uh, boost the recall by refining the query for the next iteration. And now let's go deep into each of these steps to see how they work. Our approach starts with the data preparation step to pre-process the input text collection. Specifically, we, we performed uh, entity linking, quantity, quantity recognition, and OpenAI using tools from the prior world. And by mapping these, uh, the outputs of these three steps, we obtain a collection of triples EQX. Um, so basically, X, X triple consists of an entity, a quantity both linked to the KB, and a context X, which is a backwards that expresses the, the connection between the entity and the quantity. 
Uh, for example, from this sentence, we detect the entity Eiffel Tower, the, the two quantities, the two, uh, two open ID tuples, which uh, correspond to the two triples about the height and the construction cost of the, of the Eiffel Tower. So we, we can see that uh, the only difference between an EQX triples and, and a KB fact is that the context X is not can canonically yet, this part. So in this work, we will use this EQX triples as the proxy for extracting KB fact. And, um, so, uh, and we want to select from the set of extracted EQX triples, the ones that, that are relevant to the target predicate B. Okay, so to do this, we first uh, construct uh, the so-called uh, predicate targeted query T, which uh, basically consists of three components. A predicate domain, uh, PD, which is a type of the subject entities. A predicate unit, which is a set of possible unit from a uh, possible unit of the object quantities. And a predicate context, which is a multi set of keywords where each set is a paraphrase of the target predicate. In the first iteration, we construct an initial query using uh, using uh, if, uh, information from the KB, uh, where each uh, where the uh, the predicate context uh, PX uh, contains only one paraphrase, which is the predicate label. Uh, for example, uh, uh, so for example for this predicate building height, we can construct the, the initial query with a domain building unit uh, meter feet and uh, the context height. Uh, and uh, using this uh, this query, we query into the uh, EQX uh, collection to compute a score for each triple, reflecting their relevance to the predicate. And the score are basically computed by matching the entity with the predicate domain, uh, the quantity with the predicate unit, and the context with the predicate context. And then uh, by thresholding on the relevance score, we divide the collection of EQX triples into two groups the high confidence group and the low confidence group. The high confidence group is assumed to have almost confident results. However, a small fraction of them could still be wrong. Uh, so in this second step, we will, we will denoise them based on the quantity value distribution. For example, our target is to remove buildings with unrealistic highs like the building uh, exceed 4,000 in this example. Our denoising technique uh, is based on consistency learning inspired from the prior work. Uh, so basically, we first uh, construct a value distribution from the set of quantity values using kernel density estimation. And then the, the distribution is used uh, to compute a noise score for each quantity in the group. And we, re we remove all the values with a noise score uh, higher than uh, some specific threshold. Uh, uh, the, the denoising has two outputs. First, uh, by removing all the values with high noise score, we obtain a clean version of the high confidence group, which can be added to the KB. And second, we achieve a better, uh, better estimation of the distribution, which uh, will be used in query expansion later. So uh, this figure showing an example. In, uh, in the picture on the left, we have detected uh, noisy values from the high confidence group. And then after re removing them, uh, we can uh, reconstruct a better uh, distribution of building's height, this one. Okay, after denoising, we go to step three, uh, consolidation. At this step, uh, the quantity fact in the high confidence group can be added to the KB. However, they still need to be uh, consolidated because of the inconsistency in the quantity values. For example, uh, for the same entity, different quantities can be stated at different precisions, or different quantities can be stated using different units so that their values can be slightly different after conversion. And the final reason is some quantity values are context dependent, such as uh, company revenue or uh, car, uh, uh, car fuel consumption in the city or in highway. Uh, the context can be simple like date or time, but there can also be uh, more, uh, more other complex qualifiers. So uh, our solution is that we just uh, group pairs of entity and predicate by time, and then select the most uh, frequent value for each of the group. So you can see that this uh, pragmatic solution still does not uh, totally solve the last issue about, about the context uh, dependency, and we will leave this for future work. 
Okay, so now we have uh, process, uh, uh, process the high confidence group and add them to the KB. Uh, however, we haven't thought, uh, thought uh, the low confidence group yet, which could also contain good results. So in this step, uh, we will automatically expand the, ta uh, the targeted query context to capture different ways of expressing the same bracket, which are used uh, for subsequent iterations. To do this, uh, the idea is to exploit the same information in the high confidence group that are stated in different ways in the low confidence group. Uh, for example, uh, if in the high confidence group, there is the EQX triple uh, saying that the tower ha has the height of 330 meters. And at the same time, in the low confidence group, there's a triple saying that uh, the Eiffel Tower has stand at all uh, 330 meters. Uh, then we can consider Stanto as a, a candidate paraphrasing context. Based on this idea, we can evaluate uh, the quality of each candidate uh, paraphrasing context expired using several ways, uh, such as by looking at the total number of EQX triples in, in the low confidence group that contains uh, X prime, or by comparing their quantities uh, to the uh, value distribution that uh, we have constructed earlier from the high confidence group. And then we, like, uh, we rank all the possible candidate context by their, quant uh, by their quality, and then we choose the best one to expand the query for the next iteration. Okay, uh, for the, uh, the, the evaluation, uh, we performed uh, some experiment to evaluate our approach. Uh, for the setup, uh, we use uh, Wikidata as the KB, which is the richest uh, publicly available KBs in terms of uh, quantity defect. Our text, uh, uh, text collection uh, consists of about uh, 30 million documents uh, combined from English, Wikipedia, and other news articles. Uh, we experimented uh, on six predicates, uh, buildings height, margins elevation, and so on, you can see here. Uh, we measured uh, the quality of the extracted fact using three metrics, uh, the precision, recall, and novelty, where the recall is computed relatively to what are, what are already contained in Wikidata, and novelty is basically the fraction of extracted facts that are new to the KB. We compare our method with three baselines, the Q-search system from the, the earlier work, and the two neural language models, Robeta and GPT-3. Okay, and uh, these are the main results that we have got. Uh, you can see that here, uh, QRL is our method. From this table, we can see that our uh, QRL method uh, outperformed all, uh, all three baseline in all metrics. The total number of extracted facts by QRL uh, varies from hundreds to, to, to thousands, uh, which, uh, with the precision uh, reaching about 90% uh, for the predicate mountains at uh, mountains uh, elevation and earthquake uh, magnitude. The recall is fine, but still quite low compared to what are already available in Wikidata. And finally, the novelty numbers show the, the potential for adding new knowledge, knowledge to the KB. And this measure is especially good for predicate buildings height and earthquake magnitude, which is from 60 to 70%. Okay, to investigate if the iterative approach, uh, iterative approach of QR is productive, in this picture on the left, we show the number of extracted facts and their precision after each iteration. As you can see, uh, there's an increase in the output size, uh, meaning that we acquire more facts after each iteration. We can also see that the precision lines uh, stay um, high throughout uh, these iterations, meaning that uh, we do not lose much precision in the extraction process. In the table on the right, uh, we show the paraphrasing context that we have automatically learned during the extraction. Um, all of these are uh, meaningful contexts which explain why we can keep the high precision during the extraction process. Okay, um, I would like to conclude our presentation here. Uh, in this work, we have uh, proposed a novel method for enhancing knowledge spaces with quantity fact with the two main contributions. The first contribution is a query expansion technique to increase the recall of the extraction. And the second contribution is a novel technique for answering the uh, precision of the extract fact using uh, consistency uh, based on uh, um, quantity value distribution. Um, and finally, uh, the experiment shows that uh, our method outperforms the baseline. Thank you so much uh, for listening. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Any question from the audience? Question? No question? No question? No. I, I have I have a question. I, we have a question. Who just go on, please? Oh, no, no, it's not a question. No, it's not a question. Okay, I have a question. In your evaluation, you evaluate this with uh, um, DBB, the English version of DBB and Wiki, Wikipedia? Uh, Wikidata. Wikidata, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the English version. Uh, can you repeat the, the question? You, you, Wiki... you, English version? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, sir. We use can only you... English Wikidata. Yeah. Okay, can you apply this approach to other languages such as French or? I think this are, um, this can be applied um, because our our method is keyword based. Because like you can see, you can see that we 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 try to learn uh, properties of the same bracket, and I think uh, the main assets uh, of um, the, the 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 I mean the 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 what what we what what we observe is that uh, keywords are important for. Uh, for extracting quantity facts, because, like, for example, when you talk about, uh, for example, some some special concept like um, uh, material coercivity, co then the, the word coercivity is very important. You cannot use any other words for for changing the meaning of of like for I mean for for expressing the fact. You have to use some special keywords. <laughs> so um, as long as uh, this this property applies for other language, like um, I, I mean, using keywords and. Using different different keywords to express the same bracket, then you can can also so use the same approach for other other languages. I think. 